All right, so this is just a quick tutorial on running Comet from the command line. I'm sure there's way better ways to do it from within a project or, I mean, using Python, but here's how I've done it before with the command line. First, you have to install it. And here's um, Unbabel's um, GitHub page for Comet. This was developed by uh, the language service provider Unbabel. And so if we go over here to installation, installation is really straightforward. You know, if you use pip, and this is how I installed, and this is how I installed it on my Unix machine. However, there were tons of problems with installing it. I remember um, problems with dependencies and and things I didn't foresee. I cannot remember at all what the problems were, how I fixed it, but I did eventually fix it. So once you install Comet, then what you need is some texts. So right here, I've got my source text, I've got my human reference text, and then I've got a bunch of different machine translations. So you know, I've got my source text in Spanish here. I did a really short one just for a demo. It's just seven segments long. And here I've got my translation from Spanish into English that I did. And then I've got all these different machine translations. And the thing with the files that you use is you just have to make sure that the same, um, that each segment is on a new line of the plain text file and that the number of line in the plain text file corresponds to the exact same segment in every single file. So once you've made sure of that, then you can run comma. It's not like um, TER score where you have to have some sort of an identifier after each line in the plain text file. You don't need an identifier, you just need to make sure that each segment is on the same line of the file. All right, so anyways, we've got our source, our reference, and then a bunch of different hypothesis files. And I already ran Comet just a little while ago. You can see um, the syntax here. You write Comet space score, and then you got a flag of S, and then you give the source file. You got a flag of H for hypothesis, you give the hypothesis file, and you flag R for reference, and you give the, the human reference translation. And so once you run that line, it takes forever to load um, the language model. And it takes especially forever if you have a really old machine like I do. And then once it does that, it will um, do its thing with however many um, segments you have, and it will spit out a score for each segment, and then it will give a system-wide score over all of them. And of course, this is much more effective when you're working with um, real data and a lot of data. Here I've only got seven segments, but this time I did it with uh, Amazon, Amazon's results, and I can run it again right now with a different um, hypothesis file. And yes, I'm sure you've noticed that I've got this redundant uh, text for the the current directory. I know I probably don't need to write that, but I don't I don't know why I do it. Um, let's see. Instead of Amazon, let's try DeepL. And we give our reference file and we run it. And I kind of want to test out if you've already just barely run it, does it need to take forever to um, to load the model? And I'm pretty sure the answer to that is that it still does take forever to load. It took, I think, 
30 minutes, 20, 20 to 30 minutes to load the model last time. Um, we'll see if it takes that long this time. I'm betting it will. All right, two hours later, it loaded the model and then it spat out the scores for Deep L. So here you can see we've got a score for each segment for Deep L. And you can see it's scoring better like on segment six, on segment five. Um, it scored worse on segment four. But in the aggregate, when it gives the system score, it appears to be much better um, than Amazon. And so Comet scores have shown to correlate quite well with human evaluation, um, direct assessment scores. And that's kind of what it's designed to do is to give a direct assessment score which is you know usually between zero and one but as you can see it can go negative or it can go beyond one so um anyways th what this basically says is it appears that the the for this type of content the deep l mt engine um translates in a way that's more similar to the human translation that we could say is a better translation than the the Amazon engine did in this small demo experiment. So that's how you can run Comet in the command line. It's fairly straightforward. You just have to make sure you set up your your plain text files the right way. For those of you who are curious, you know, just to actually be able to look at the the MT output compared to the human translation, I'll give you a quick view. So here is the source text in Spanish. You can press pause and read that as much as you'd like. Here is the human reference translation in English. You can also hit pause, read this as much as you'd like. And finally, we tested with Comet, Amazon, and DeepL. So let's look at both of those. Here's Amazon. You can press pause and take a look. Here's DeepL. You can press pause and take a look at that. So if you're interested with that, you know, being able to judge as a human the actual MT output compared to the human translation all in relation to the source text. There you have it.